Hey guys, this is Bea from Responsive Muse. So in this course, we've already talked about the master page, what elements are common in the master page, like for example, the footer, the logo, and also the menu. We also made, made this menu responsive. We converted the menu to a mobile menu. We also talked about the difference between a fluid breakpoint and a fixed breakpoint. Also about the concept of responsive design. Um, you've also learned how to create a beautiful slideshow for your homepage, uh, an image gallery and a contact form. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about uh, another tool that we can find in Muse, which is a uh, pin tool. There are actually two pin tools, so it's not something that we're going to use in our template, but I'm going to, to explain you a little bit how these pin tools work. And I'm going to use, for example, what you can see here, and, and you've noticed that I'm using a fluid breakpoint because it's a bit easier to understand the concept. This concept can be a little bit confusing because if you know, where there are up here two pinning elements. So what I'm going to do in this chapter, I'm going to talk about these different pinning tools, like pinning tool number one, which is how I'm going to call this one over here, and pinning tool number two. Also, then we're going to go back to our template and we're going to talk about the state panels and we're going to create all the state buttons that we're going to use. OK, so first thing is uh, pinning tool number one, which is up here. So this pin, what it does is it pins the elements to the top or the bottom of the page. So what I've done is create six different elements. There's this circles that you can see here because the, this pin tool has six options, which is um, top left, top center, top right, and bottom left, bottom center, and bottom right. So what it does is it kind of like sticks and glues these elements so they will always be visible. It kind of pins it to the browser, so there will always be visible the browser. No matter if you scroll down, and it will always be visible. So first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to select this circle here and pin it to the top left. So as you see, I'm just going to drag it a little bit here. I'm going to zoom in. As you see here, we have this line dot from the top to the left because what it does it kind of um, tells muse that this element is going to stick and it will have like this distance this exact distance from the top and to the left okay so what i'm going to do with this same one where i'm just going to leave it here this center one is going to be pinned here to the center and this right one also here to the right so as you see, this one is pinned to the top and to the right, and this one is just to top and to the center. So I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to preview this now. OK, so these are the circles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down, and you'll see. That's why I use these photos here. You're going to see how the, the page is actually scrolling, but the these elements won't move. So as you see, it reaches to a point and there's no more scrolling because the page is not that long enough but these elements won't move so this is kind of useful if you want to make a, a sticky menu and actually you can create a, another element over here I'm just doing this to show you I'm gonna fill it in with a color let's use this sorry let's use this screen and I'm just gonna bring it to the back So I can do this too. I can pin it to the top. So it's more like a sticky header. Okay. Same thing with these bottom elements. They will do exactly the same and they will pin to the bottom. So actually now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this a little bit down 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 a little bit more so right now we have the top elements sticked and the bottom elements also pinned so what we're going to see is we're going to see this all the all the all the, the small circles circles are visible because i've pinned them so that's why no matter how 
up and how if I scroll up and down, they will always be visible. So that's just if you want to create a sticky, a sticky footer. Okay, you can actually um, do this not only with op with I mean you can do this with any kind of object. You can use um, images, you can use text, and you can use any other figures too. Okay, even grouped elements to work with this. So this works the same way. Also, um, these pin elements will also react differently with depending on the resize. So right now I've set the resize to none, but let me show you. So up here, this I'm just going to leave it resize to none but over here I'm going to make it responsive width and responsive height so it will shrink at the same time the width and the height so we'll see how it respects the distance and I'm just gonna make it smaller and you'll see how the circle respects the distance from top and left and right and the center too and it shrinks at the same time okay so this is just a way so you guys understand how how it works actually i'm not sure if you've noticed but down here all these elements are set to none and i'm just going to drag the browser make it smaller again so you guys see how it works okay Okay, so now we're going to move on to pin tool number two, which is this one over here. And in this case, we just have three options. So what is the difference between pin tool number one and pin tool number two? Well, the main difference is that the pin tool number one, it actually glues and sticks the elements. And what this pin does, it just kind of like mm, sets a behavior. So the distance it's like you if you mark uh, the distance from the edge of this element to the edge of the browser the edge of the page okay so pin number one you're going to pin the elements to the browser and pin number two you actually pin it to the page so in this case whenever you scroll down you you won't see these elements because they're not sticked okay because they're not that that pinned it's just pinned to to respect and so the distance are always constant so obviously this is always better with visual elements and visual examples so that's why i have these three images over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set this one this element over here to the left i'm going to pin this to the center and pin this to the right same way you see how this top element wait i'm going to delete this so you guys see this top element over here it's pinned to the top and to the left but in this case this element here is just pinned to the left to the left so the distance between the edge of the page which is this one over here I'm gonna zoom in so you guys see the distance between the edge and the edge of the object so this is the dotted line that marks the distance it will always be it will be all, always remain constant no matter how big the browser is okay so same thing happens with the center and same thing with the right over here so right now the size is reset sorry the size is set to none and then afterwards I'm gonna play a little bit with the with resize so you see how these elements can react okay so preview and as you see here we have these are our elements and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make them smaller see how the size over here I'm going to scroll a little bit up see how the sorry the distance from the edge of the browser and the edge of the element is always the same over here too so left and right sorry it remains the same distance always okay so this is the reason why you are uh, you have all the resize tools because it gets to a point where you also want to set a behavior. You always if you want a menu always to be in a certain distance from the left of the browser, but it gets to a point where it actually has to shrink. It has to be responsive. So that's why we have this resize tool. So what I'm going to do is set to responsive width and height this element so you guys see how it works. 
And right now, to avoid confusion, I'm just going to unpin these elements here. Okay, so now I'm going to preview. Right, so uh, remember, it's act they have set a distance, a specific distance to the left and the right and the center, and uh, all these elements are resize. I'm going to resize uh, width and height. So I'm just going to make it smaller so you guys see how it shrinks. It gets two points. It is shrinking and shrinking because I'm using a fluid breakpoint to show you all these examples. And as you see, it keeps the same distance, the same proportion. Okay, so just imagine I'm going to set this one, for example, to none and just see how it reacts. So you see how the others are, well, obviously they reaches to a point where it overlays. But just so you guys understand a little bit how the pinning tool and the resize tool in this case works. So done with the explanation about the pin tool. Now I'm going to go back to our template, our co-working template, and I'm going to talk about the state buttons. Um, well, state buttons and the state panel. In previous chapters, I've already talked about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to refresh it. The state panel is where you can state a different behavior or a different appearance for a certain element. So there are actually four states. I'm going to click on this thumbnail here in the gallery. And right now it's active, but whenever it's normal or roll over, see how the appearance changes. So we did this, we used the states but I mean the states panel with the gallery, also with this menu over here. Um, we've used it also for the contact button for this submit button over here. Just going to click on it so you guys see right now it's normal and whenever it's rollover it changes the color. Also here in the master page we've used it here in our our menu and also in this submit button of our small contact form here in the footer. So just to refresh it, I'm going to show you other options because you can use the states panel with an image. You can use it with uh, a text frame with a font. But just to be clear again, um, the font has to be a standard font or you have to convert it into web font. It will not work with a font that exports into an image because it's an image. This works with fonts, okay? Because you can state like a little bit, you can play around a little bit with it. I'm actually going to show you all the things that you can do. Because um, so far what we've done in this template is um, play a little bit with opacity and the colors, but nothing else. So I've created another website here and I've dragged an image. So I'm going to show you another thing that you can do with a states panel. So I'm going to click over it and you can see uh, right now I'm going to go to the rollover state. So click on rollover. Make sure you're always in the state that you want to make the changes because if not, it will be a bit messy. So leave it here in the rollover state. And what I'm going to do is if you see this edges here, so what I'm going to select two edges. So this will kind of like deform a little bit and I will increase the radius. So it's going to be more uh, in a circle form than in a rectangle form. So I'm going to click on these two edges. Right now it's very subtle because radius is just um, 10, but I'm just going to bring it up to 50. See something's happening now, but just to make sure I'll bring it up to 100. Make sure you click on fade so the transition is a bit more smooth. And I'm going to show you. So this is what happens. All right. So this is another thing that you can do. Another thing that is pretty handy is that here in the widget library in buttons folder, you have a state button too. So it's not a widget. It's just a rectangle and a text, a text frame, but it's pretty handy if you don't have any other program like illustrator to create all this stuff. 
So this is a way you just can do the same thing, change the color, change the fill color, and change the rollover color. It's just I uh, wanted to show you that you also have this inside Muse, okay? It's inside the widget panel, although it's not a widget, okay? So I'm just going to drag out, I'm going to get this text, sorry, I'm text frame. And I'm going to show you how to use uh, uh, the states panel with text. So I'm going to click on, I'm going to type this responsive news. Okay, so I'm going to open this text tool. So right now we have web fonts and standard fonts. So I'm going to choose, for example, this standard font here, Trebuchet. I'm going to bring up the size and change the color to this blue and I'm going to center it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is click over the text tool and go to roll over. So what I want to happen here, what I actually want is I'm going to create this effect. I'm going to go here to the text tool and I'm going to increase this value, this tracking value over here. So I'm going to click on 20. What it does is like it make extends this so the text the frame needs to be bigger. So now it's normal, went back to normal and I'll go to roll over. So I think this is too big so I'm just going to bring it down instead of 20 I'm going to bring it down to 10. Okay, see the difference? I'm going to preview this now. So mouse over and this happens. So it's not smooth enough because I've forgotten to add a transition. Okay, so let's go back to preview again. Okay, so this also happens. I normally use this effect for 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 menus. So this the elements inside inside the menu. Okay, so remember I've used a standard font. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to use a web font. Okay, so first web font, I have my web font here and I'm going to show you with this one over here. So make sure it has exactly, because I just copy it, it copied the effect. And you see both of them working. All right. Okay, so we're done talking about pinning elements. Uh, we're done talking about state buttons. And this is going to be very useful for you guys whenever you design your own template. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow the rest of the chapters. Thank you very much for watching.